sauteuring wine that needs just a little bit of salt. You got to admit that pretty yet. Oh, wait a minute, you know I forgot the most important thing? Yes. Oh, it's looking good. I guarantee that's a fine one. Hello there, I'm Justin Wilson. Boiled shrimps is as much a tradition in South Louisiana as boiled crawfish or chicken jambalaya. The secret to delicious boiled shrimp lies in how it's boiled and what kind of dressing you dip it in. If it's really boiled right, them shrimps don't need on sauce at all, no. I guarantee They'll have plenty of good flavor from the lemon and the onion and the garlic and the wine and all the other wonderful seasonings that go into the boiling pot. People in South Louisiana aren't always formal, no. To get their enjoyed out of eating boiled shrimps or crawfish, come to think of it, all they got to do is spread some newspaper over a table, put a roll of paper out there, and paper towels and keep them shrimps coming while everybody's eating them. The best dressing for boiled shrimps has a ketchup and horseradish base with lots of other stuff thrown in. You see how I do it when you watch this show that was made 25 years ago on Mississippi Educational TV. Now have your enjoys. How y'all are? I'm glad you to see me, I guarantee. Isn't that a beauty? Isn't that a beautiful red snapper? Hello there, boy. Isn't that a beautiful red snapper? I guarantee that's a fine one. You know, I never will forget I got a couple of friends that went fishing down in the Gulf of Mexico off from Grand Deal. That's Grand Isle to you. And one of them was told all about that. He said, you know, me and, and my friend go out there and, and we trying to catch some fish. And man, he hang one, whoo, it's a fish, what's a fish? I guarantee. I said, don't lose him. He said, I ain't gonna lose him. Don't you worry something, none at all, any about that. I'm gonna hold on with him. And he said, but I'm hang on something. And I don't want to lose him. You just hold on, we gonna get him. And shoom, I dive over there and follow them lying on down. And you know somebody done park an automobile right down the bottom of them Gulf of Mexico down there. And I get down there and look in there and he got a red snapper. Whoo, just about this big, weighed 26 pounds. And I can tell that by the scale he got on him, you know? <laughs> and I reach in there, I see where he got himself hang up. And I go to reach in them window to untangle them line. And every time I did that, <laughs> that red snapper rolled them window up. I guarantee <laughs> Man, I tell you, let me put him over here out of the way. Fine looking boy. You know, I'm a, a big fella, but some of my very best friends are a little shrimp, and I got some right shrimp. Mm -hmm. Don't that pretty? Now, in this pot right here, I got four quarts of water I done put on that. And I'm gonna add uh, eight lemon what I done cut in half. Got to watch yourself and put them on there fast. <laughs> eight lemon cut in half. Three onion quartered up. Got three onion quartered up there. Man. And uh, some garlic. It's not, it's not minced, it's just chopped up, that's all. Put that on there, about two parts of that. And I'm gonna put one leaf, one stalk. My well, asked a friend once to bring me a stalk of celery and he brought me the whole bush. <laughs> put that on there. I'm gonna put some Lee and Perrin Worcestershire sauce. About um, two tablespoons full. One. Two tablespoons full. <laughs> then I'm gonna put just a little something to give it a flavor, a real flavor. Three cups of sauterne wine. You use this white wine, it does not, 
discolor them shrimps too, you know, that's real good. And then I'm gonna put two tablespoons full of red pepper. Two tablespoons full, one. I'll measure that careful. One tablespoon. Two tablespoons. There we go, I wanna get every bit of that on there. I don't wanna lose none of that, I'll get her on tea. Now, what you do, you salt this until it's briny. Put them salt on there like this. I'm gonna put nine tablespoons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> put nine tablespoons on that. And that, uh, I'm gonna let that kind of stir that around a little bit to be sure she's all in there, that's right. And we let that season in cooking that water just a little, little bit. Now, you can use the same recipe for crab or crawfish, it don't make some difference, but you, you want to add a little more salt for crab and for crawfish because they take a little more salt than other, other shellfish what you might cook. And you want salt because salt is the secret of all shellfish to make them taste good, I guarantee. Now, you know, talking about this, these uh, fish and crawfish and crab, I got a couple of friends that went fishing, I got to tow this on them. They get one of these wide, five or four foot wide uh, bateau boat. Not a pirogue, no, a bateau. That's a flat bottom boat. And they get out there in the river and they haul off and fish and fish and fish and they got some beer with them and they got some old master whiskey, about three fifths of that. <laughs> and they don't caught no fish and they about to lose the discourage. And one of them say, look, let's don't lose our discourage. Whoo, let's make a little bet here. I'll bet you $5 I'll catch more fish than you. Not even say you on. I guarantee you. He reach on his pocket and put his five dollar out there, and his first one reaching in and finally get some five dollar bill. And he got to put it back. And when he's putting it back on his pocket there, he slipped and zoom, he fall overboard. And when he came up and spit half the damn meat river out, what he done swallow. His friend said, "All oh, better off. I ain't gonna bet with you if you're gonna start diving after him. I guarantee you." <laughs> now I'm gonna add five pound of raw shrimp. This right chair. I can get them all in this pot. I'm gonna come close. Mm. Man, that smells good already. And I'm gonna let this cook about 20 minutes. Put that over here like this. Turn this far off. And wipe my hand just a least little bit. Now, I got this pot right here. I'm gonna put over here. Mmm, mmm. Turn them fire off right there and put this on warm. I'm gonna show that with you. Whew. See them little shrimps there? Let me get one of them little devil out there and show you what I'm talking about. See them hulls stand away from that? Oh yeah, yeah, they stand away from that. They stand away from the meat right there. That's hot. <laughs> See that stand away from that? That's how you can tell if they're done. And they float too. That's uh, another reason why you know they're done too. I guarantee. And another good thing they did is to taste them after they boil for about uh, 20 or 15 minutes. Then you know whether they done or not. I guarantee. Now, let me tell you, I'm gonna have to go took these, these shrimp right here and pour this water off right quick to be sure they don't cook some more, but I let them steam in a dry pot. Ooh-wee! Man. Now, I just leave them right there. Let them steam in a dry pot. Let them cool a little bit before we eat that, you know? Hmm, look what I find. Ain't that fun? That's the finished shrimps right there. Man, you talk about good. That's good, I guarantee. Put that on warm. Now, these are a real farm. I'm gonna peel one of that because it's cool. And see, see how they look there. And they look so good. They don't even need some seeding. Don't need any sauce. Hmm, I should say not. That's fine, I guarantee. But you know, I better make a little sauce, a little dressing. 
I just feel that and eat that because it's, it's real good, you know, I'm just, and it's so appealing, I guarantee. Now, some people like shrimp broil, which we're gonna do in just a minute. But, um, and I can't wait to eat them, but you might want a little sauce and we're gonna fix some up right now for you in this. That's mayonnaise, a mayonnaise, depending on where you're from, put that in there. We beat that constantly and we pour a little olive oil on that and keep beating it all the time. Just keep beating that all the time. And we bring that right back to where it's as firm as it was if we beat that long enough. You know, ain't nothing to it. Come right on back there. And then I'm gonna put two teaspoons full of hot sauce. Ooh, you man. Two teaspoons, sound like a lot, but it's not. Two teaspoons. <laughs> and I'm gonna put a teaspoon full of salt. Teaspoon full of salt. God damn. I'm gonna stir that up a little bit. Then I'm gonna put a 16 ounce bottle of ketchup on that. Whole doggone bottle. Go on there now. There we go. We're gonna make some sauce here. Ah, yeah, now I'm gonna put a tablespoon full of Worcestershire sauce on that and stir it up real good. Got to be stirred up. It ain't some good, no. Tablespoon, I'm gonna measure this real careful too. <laughs> put that on there. And I take a little lemon juice, what I already got here, and I pour in this ketchup bottle because I want to get all of that. And I shook that up. See that? See how it takes that ketchup out of that? Then we pour the rest of this ketchup. Ain't that fine. Who did not waste a drop, no. And we stir that up. And then we put a level tablespoon full of cream horseradish. Now you can put more than that if you like. You can add whatever you want, it don't make some good. But I want you to notice now, you, you don't cook this sauce. I just noticed in my own cookbook, they said to boil for 30 minutes. Well, that's terrible. There's a misprint that I didn't know. I never used my cookbook to make it. I just get after it and do it. The cookbook is wrong. Now there it is, there's your sauce. You not that pretty? That is good too. I guarantee you that's good. I'm gonna put it over here out of my way. Right. Oh. Need shrimp, I'll just put them here too, out of my way. Now, I got some more raw shrimp here. In fact, I got three pounds, to be exact with you. And I'm gonna haul off here. You know that sauce and shrimp is pretty good. If I don't do something with all these little Andre shrimp, this show will be X-rated, I guarantee. <laughs> now, down here I got a pan that I got a quarter of a cup of olive oil in there and I done chip up in this pan a stick of butter, one stick of butter. And I done put that in the oven and melted it down to where it run around real good. And I'm gonna fix that in just a minute, but uh, I had to do something to remind myself of that, and that reminded me of a story I want to tell you about two friends with me what went to fish in False River. That's about 35 miles from Baton Rouge, and they rent a boat. One of them named Emil, the other one named Alcide. And Emil and them catch them fish just as fast as they chunk in the water, they pull the brim out and put it on the boat. Alcide say, Emil, you know, it's a shame we can't mark this place high. Amy said, don't you worry, I'm gonna mark this place in right now. Alcide said, how you gonna did that? Well, he reached in his pocket and he get his knife and <coughs> he knocked the side of the boat. He said, I got this place marked now. We can brought ourselves back anytime we want. <laughs> well, they fish until they just about sink the boat and they start back to where they rent them boat. And Alcide said, you know, Emil, you smart. Whoo, I guarantee. But just see, Paul, we don't get them same boat next time. How we gonna find this place, huh? <laughs> Now in this right here, I'm gonna add about two teaspoons full of Lee and Perrin Worcestershire sauce. And uh, if you don't, if you're not used to doing it, you better measure it, but I'm not. I know just about what two teaspoons full is. That's about right. 
and I'm going to put one teaspoonful of Louisiana red hot sauce. Now, this is not Tabasco. This is cayenne hot sauce. One teaspoon. One, 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 one teaspoon right there. <laughs> we put it on there, and we stir this up real good. We mix it up good. We don't want all that hot stuff to be on one shrimp, no. <laughs> that ain't bad. That ain't good, no. Now, that's mixed up real good. That's for sure. And I put these shrimp in here, one layer. And I salt and pepper after I get them all in there. With salt and red pepper, cayenne pepper. Whoo, that smells good already and they ain't even cooked, no. Mmm, that's for sure. Come on, shrimps. Get them on that pan. Ooh, we better come out eating. Ain't like the Dickens to eat some raw shrimp. Mm-hmm. That's smelling good. Can't tell which I'm smelling. These shrimp that I'm fixing to broil, or those shrimp what I'm boiling over there. I know I smell shrimps. Oh, yeah, that's just fine. Come out just bon. That means just rat in French. <laughs> now the shrimp left over cook every one of them doggone shrimp. Now, ah, there we go. Now I'm gonna haul off there and put some red pepper and salt on that. Hmm. You know, this'll make you sneeze just like black pepper if you don't look out. <laughs> Kinda sneeze red instead of black, that's all. <laughs> mm. Man, that's pretty, yeah. Whew. Now, we put some salt on that. And remember this, fish take a lot of salt. Shrimp particularly take a lot. Now, I'm a, I got a cup of salt turn here, but I don't think it'll take that much. What you, what you have to do is with this, is you put enough sauterne wine to bring it up to about halfway up the side of the shrimp, you know? But put that all over there because I don't want one shrimp to have more than his share. <laughs> mm. Mm. There I go. Ain't that pretty? I guarantee that's pretty. That's for sure. Put it down here out of my way. Now, you put these ordinarily in a preheated 350 degree oven for 20 minutes. But I'm just gonna put these on here for right now. I've already got one in the oven. It's been in there about 20 minutes. I'm gonna show them to you right now. Ooh wee, that's pretty, yeah. Whew. Look at that. Don't that pretty, huh? Now, I'm gonna put this on broil and let him broil for just a little while. Ooh, it's hot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, we let them broil until they're ready yet. And we're gonna eat them broil shrimp. When you broil shrimp, you wanna add them just as soon as you possible can because I wanna tell you, they better that way. And if you, you got to broil them just right, they're kinda tricky. You don't wanna broil them too long, no, and not too fast. And it'll be good if you did that way. One time I never will forgot, I slip up and brought them too doggone long. Whew, they did not taste good. But they sure did make some real nice half soles for some shoes I had, I'll guarantee you that. <laughs> now I'm going to start, let me put this over here and keep it cooking. Let me put my, up there. I'm going to, cook some fish for you. Now, I, I caught the snapper there, but I didn't caught but one. But what I got was some real good red fish. They're kind of halfway kin, you know. Got some red fish. We're gonna bake that for you. We're gonna bake that for you. First of all, we got to saute some green onion, what we got here, two and a half cup we put that on here. Let me turn it up a little bit. Yeah. Let's get into sauteing rat quick. Then we put some celery. One leaf of chopped celery. Then I'm gonna put on this. Should I get this stir around just a little bit? Two 13 ounce can of mushroom stem and pieces. There they are. I don't know how come it's 13, but that's what the recipe called for when I first 
stumbled on it. Two can. Ooh, wee, that's good enough to eat right there. Ah, guarantee. Hoo-wee. Mmm, this mean good. Now, we're gonna let this saute just a little bit while I'm getting something else done over here. I'm gonna put a little olive oil on this pan right here. That to keep them flesh from sticking. That's all that's for. Put that on there. Now, we got a, we took a gill out. And we took them gill out of that fish. You don't ever want to cook a fish with the gill in it. No sirree, I guarantee. And you want to cut them eye out because they look back at you if you don't do that. You know that? <laughs> you don't want one looking back at you, no. Now, I'm going to salt and pepper these with red pepper and salt. Salt the inside, too. Don't forget that. A little red pepper. <laughs> Just a little. Then we put this on the pan. I'll get the other side in just a minute. Put a little red pepper inside there while I'm taught about it. Put this right here. Need a little salt. Put on there. Mm -hmm. Put that in there too. We put him in here and let him face his cousin. <laughs> just like that. We put some more salt on this side. You got salt both sides. Put some salt on there like that. Let me get my red pepper. Put some of that on the inside too. Pepper both of them just like that. Mm. Man, you talk about fine. Now that's fine, I guarantee. Get rid of them gill. Now, this has been sauteing over here. We put that in the, in the pan. On top of them fish, we're gonna spread this right now. Mmm. Get up that close, boy. Now you're going. Spread it on them fish all over. Ooh, you talk about. Fine. I don't want to waste any of that, no. That smell good. I'm gonna wrench this out with some of this salt turned wine to be sure I don't. <laughs> Where's that? Ooh -wee. Now I'm gonna put a little lean parent on that because we got to have some of that uh, Worcestershire sauce. One tablespoon full. This will do for a measure today. One tablespoon. Hmm. And I'm gonna pour that all over this right here. Mmm. That smells good. Whoo. Now you thought I forgot this other so turn, but you wrong. <laughs> Put that on there like that. Mmm. Mmm. That smells good. I got to put a little uh, wine vinegar on there. Now, four dash and two. <laughs> I just put it up. Now, I'm going to sprinkle a little chopped parsley. Now, parsley is, is beautiful stuff to look at, but I want to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. It's a fine seasoning, too. Us Cajuns found that out a long time ago, and we use it to season a lot of things that most people don't. Let me put this out of the way right here. Now, ain't that fine? Now, I'm gonna put this in the oven. What, uh, it's already set at 375 degrees. And you got to cook that about one hour. Let me get that oven open. It's the best thing for me to do it right now. It's on 375, I preheated it, and it's ready to go. Now, you cook this about an hour or until the vegetables are done, are tender. And you can stick your fork in your fish all the way down to the bone and it's tender, tender, tender. Now, I'm gonna get these uh, shrimps out of here. Hmm, they smell good. Ooh, and they're done too, they're just wrapped. Just exactly wrapped. Look at that, turn them oven off from the broil. And I'm gonna put some on a plate and go over to this table and show you how to eat some of that, I guarantee. <laughs> Ain't that fine? Mmm. Mmm. Ah. 
And while I'm here, I might just well get a little of this fish that I fixed a little earlier so I'd be sure I had some. Ain't that fine? Pour myself a little wine. Yeah, just me get a little wine. Hmm. Now I got a little garlic bread to go with this and a nice green salad. And I want to tell y'all a story before I take one bite even. I got a friend that was rode down a bayou bank one day looking for some cattle is what he had. And he saw the bayou was real swollen up from some rain, what they had. You know, that swelled them bayou up pretty good, just like a river. And he saw a Cajun sit on the side of the bank and fish there, and he rode up to him and said, my friend, do you know a shallow place where I can wade this, this horse what I got here? He was riding the horse back there. I can ride this horse across and I won't get myself wet, huh? This king said, yeah, yeah. He said, how come you want to go across? He said, I got some cattle on the other side and I want to round them up and I, I need to get across. That's how come. He said, okay. Right down there by them stump, it's shallow, 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 shallow. He said, all right. So he rode down there and kabloom, he jumped his horse off and horse, man and all go out of sight. Just his hat left float on top of the water up there. <laughs> and man, he came up spitting that bayou out. And he say, how come you'd have told me that lie? This kid say, I did not lie. He said, oh, yes, you did. Oh, no, I did not. He said, just for them third lie, I'm gonna unclam this bayou and beat you plumb most all the way to that, I guarantee. This kid say, I did not lie. He said, I'm gonna do it just as soon as I can get out of here. He said, I swear I did not lie. Just before you brought yourself in, ask me, do you know a shallow place where I can wade my horse across this bayou? Just before you brought yourself, a little bitty duck with legs just about two and a half or two inch long wade all the way across right there by that stump. I guarantee you. <laughs>